Hello everybody and welcome to a very exciting video here for Arkham War the Card Game on the channel. Today I'm going to be building and playing uh, around some custom investigators. These are investigators based on the Bad Batch, uh, which uh, I believe is a Star Wars thing. So I don't know. I don't know much, if at all, uh, about Star Wars. Uh, these are designed by uh, Tasty Toast, who uh, is a regular on our channel, and uh, they've also shared these on the Arkham Horror subreddit. Uh, so I'm sort of sure if you search Bad Batch or something like that, you'll be able to find the Google Drive to check these out. There is a file to play them on uh, the Tabletop Simulator, but there also are just the images that you could print and proxy and play. Uh, albeit these are these might change. Uh, we are doing uh, some very friendly stress testing to kind of see how these go. We're going to see them in action, and then uh, this is a learning experience for myself, and then also Tasty, and then also everyone watching at home if they want to consider this uh, playing these as well. Uh, so I've looked at all of them and I've decided beforehand I'm going to be building around these two. So we're just going to separate them. Haha, ha, yes, Justin chose the survivor. Everyone loves, uh, everyone loves Justin. Uh, I do want to play around all of these guys in the future, but right now these are the two that I am most interested in starting with. So, who do we have? We're going to move them back down now that everyone else is deleted. So with this video, I'm going to build a deck for each of them, and then we are also going to uh, do a little scenario at the end of this episode. A uh, little standalone. Uh, I'm going to do my usual 29 XP is my goal for how this is going to be, and that should be a fun time. So we have Wrecker. Wrecker has three brain, one book, five fist, three foot. All firearm cards you control gain the melee trait, and the text as an action exhaust this asset, fight. You get plus two fist and deal plus one damage for this attack. If you play the Elder Sign, plus one. If the skill test was during an attack, you may immediately fight a non-aloof enemy at your location. Seems like a pretty alright Elder Sign. Won't trigger all the time, but when it does, it's going to feel pretty good. Wrecker has uh, the DC-17M Repeating Blaster Rifle. Commits for Fist Fist Wild. Uh, four ammo. Spend one ammo, fight. You get plus two and deal plus one damage for this attack. If you succeed, perform a different fight action on this card without paying its action cost. I had to get that for a second. I was like, but what? I mean, there is no different fight action. But there is, uh, because, uh, no, there isn't. No, they gain the text. Yeah, there is. We're good. We have figured it out. We have solved the mystery. Step one complete. So you can shoot someone and then hit someone. That is how that one works. Because they gain the melee trait and this text. Easy. All right. Um, put something in your head into playing your threat area. Set your base stats to one. When you succeed a skill test, discard something in your head. If the test had a difficulty of two or lower, shuffle something in your head into your deck instead. Only Wrecker may trigger this ability. Yeah, I, I figured that was uh, implied, that this should read after this test resolves. Uh, so that's, I figured that, but it is good to know that that's what the actual wording is going to be. Uh, this one makes me think that we're going to need a plan for this. Um, like, we get our gun up pretty high, like we get a, a still attack at three, but we want to make sure we're passing that test. So we do need some sort of plan around this something in our head. And then over here, we got Echo, the hacker. Uh, oh, sorry, I guess I should see the... This guy builds around firearms and guardians 0-4. to four. Uh, We have Echo. Threes all across the board. When your turn begins, search your bonded cards for a cybernetic card and put it into play. Uh, effect plus two, you may ready a cybernetic card you control. So this one is kind of... Oh, stats are lower. 7-6, look at that. Makes sense, though. There's a lot of flexibility to make up for it. So this character is kind of like... Um, an ever-rotating Lily Chen kind of feel. So you're going to have a bunch of set-aside cards that you can choose to put into play, and they're going to adapt your play style. We have Cybernetic Scomp Link. Uh, you get plus two book. When you would discover a clue, exhaust this asset. Instead, name a trait. Then search the top nine cards of your deck for a card with the name trait and draw it. Shuffle your deck. Blue Sapphire, how's it going? At the start of the investigation phase, set this card aside out of play. So they're all going to basically, you just get to do a new uh, attachment every turn. We have the Cybernetic Scomp Link. Link amplifies the mind. You get plus two brain, exhaust this acid, heal one damage or one horror from an investigator at your location. That's a strong ability. Um, plus two fists. When you initiate an attack, exhaust this asset, choose one. If the attacked enemy is not elite, automatically deal one damage to it. 
Uh, you may reveal additional chaos tokens for this attack and cancel one of them. That's really strong. Holy cow. And then we have the Enhances the Reflexes. Uh, you get plus one to all your stats, draw a card, gain a resource. Exhaust this asset, search your bonded cards for another copy of Siren and Excomplink and put it into play. This action does not provoke attacks of opportunity. We then have the uh, weakness, which is search your bonded cards for Cybernetic Scomplink, broken down, and put it into play. Treat your investigator card as if it was blank. Action, action. Set this card aside, out of play, with your bonded card. So it basically just turns you off for a turn. Which is, like, not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, his deck building is a little bit uh, different. At decoration, choose Guardian, Seeker, or Rogue. Survivor card 0 to 5, neutral 0 to 5. Cards of your chosen secondary class 0 to 1. So... We are going to be playing Rogue, baby, for this one, because we have, we have an idea. And this idea might just about to become a little bit tainted. Hmm. I wonder. So this guy has... Oh, sorry, and as well, because I'm building these as standalone and I want to have the best showcase of the deck, I'm going to be drawing my weaknesses first, just to make sure that I don't need to put any healing in. Awesome. Excuse me, you're, you're coming too. Alright, so he's getting damned. She's getting this. Okay, so what I'm thinking with Echo is because his personals are not in the deck, which means he has one less card, this could be an Underworld support deck. This could be an Underworld support deck. It makes it more likely for us to hit what we need to hit on our Mulligan. And he has built in uh, search. So we can find things like the red clock. We can't play that. But like, you know, like we can find the things that we need to find with it. He is survivor zero to five. So he has that whole survivor thing where like his card pool is not great on his thing. And because he has zero to one, like I think his deck building works really well for um this small space right so then the question is if we only go zero to one is it really worth it for an underworld support or is it better to just have multiples that's something that we'll consider as we start building uh let's get uh the green zero to ones because this is kind of where we're going to see where we where we live in this deck so my plan started with mr leo deluca so when I was uh, positing ideas at the start of this, I thought Leo DeLuca would be a good option because with Leo DeLuca in play, uh, while he himself doesn't really add anything of note, what he does do is he allows us to choose this, this, ref this uh, Scomp Link, and then we can use the action on this to play another one. Which that does is then we get to play three actions with uh, basically at 6 4, 4, 4 for our stats, which seems kind of nice. And we can kind of see if that's something that Tasty Toast wants to be possible or not with this investigator. But I think it's a good place to start. So let's look at other one experience cost cards to see what else interests us. Uh, we're going to grab some lock picks because we are the Clover. And I think, honestly, this might just end up being pretty fair. Because, uh... This might just end up being pretty fair because we're... I mean, but we are red. Like, red does have good clue-getting potential. Like, we get a look what I found in here. I think this guy's gonna be... I think this guy's gonna be pretty good. And I think he's gonna be fun to play, too. Because we can adapt to what we need on the fly. Alright. One experience, skills. We have three aces. Skeptic, Savant... Savant, honestly, is great here. Savant is kind of really good in this deck. Um, this one's not so much. Easy marks, I'm prob I might play if we don't do... Uh, 
Underworld support. Okay, now they really, like, I mean, Counter Espionage is just fine. Payday also can be good, but the thing is we really don't need that much resource generation considering we have, um, with the plan with this. This just gives us a draw card and a resource each turn. All right, but let's look at the assets, see if there's anything that really jumps out of us. Ah, yes, Sharon's Oval. So yeah, it's definitely limited for the splash color, for the, the experienced cards. Which means our experience pool, like there's the possible, I'm going to grab Eon chart here. Cards just like good. I'm going to put it over here in our, our, our potential. Honestly, I'll put some other cards over in our potential too. These two can go in the potential. They're just like good cards. <laughs> Okay. I'm also going to grab Momentum. Momentum is just like, you know, good. So you can see that our splash is very limited. Our splash is very limited, which I do think is good because once again, this goes back to the point that this character is very, uh, they can uh, adapt really well. Honestly, I'm actually want to do something. I'm going to pause this recording. All right, let's look at the survivor cards because this is where our, our the juice of our deck is coming from. So we can run all of these babies. All right, well, give me... Let's just build like a... Let's just start grabbing a traditional uh, red deck right now. Let's just start grabbing the pieces that make, uh, that make survivor sing. Um, I don't know if it can feasibly work here. Brute Force also has a good potential to just be, like, a good card. <sighs> There's definitely a case for Unrelenting to make it into the final version of this deck. I always feel like Exile cards are a little bit cheaty in a standalone, but we're still going to grab them because the card is... The card is good. Uh, and then give me the Lucky Threes, which are probably one of the most busted cards in the game for its experience level. It's absolutely insane. Survivor really lucked out that in their design they said, hey, I know what we should do. <laughs> we should make it so that... Uh, Everyone that survivors cap out at three and then that's like all right, so it should be lucky three, right? Well, we should make it the power level of a five like a five experience card eh, Maybe not five maybe four, but still it's just really good It's just really good Okay So right now we're just doing traditional red good stuff, which is uh, kind of just fine, right? It's kind of just fine. So let's kind of just look at our plan over here. I think the Eon chart's really good. Okay, and I think... Depending on how our our thing turns out, how our deck turns out, I think this is going to be, it's going to be a little bit strange, but I think this is worth a scavenging for a deck. Even if all we're grabbing back is Eon Charts. Even if all we're grabbing back is Eon Charts. Because it's our only relic, which means we can probably dig it out with this thing. It's assuming it's going to be our only relic. 
Okay, so how many cards do we got here? 16? Double it. <laughs> Alright, now we gotta take two cards out. I don't even know if this is good, TBH. Alright, one second. Spread. How much experience have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh, I need three easy marks. I got two. Here, one second. You just sit over here for the time being. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 32, 33, 36. So we realistically need to cut uh, seven experience from this deck. So the brute forces can go. I think this guy's damage output is going to be enough that this is going to kick butt. So we have 34 now. Honestly, I think the counter espionages can also go. And I need to cut three. So I can lose one of the ice picks. And that should get us to 29. Spread that shit, yo. One... 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. So we could also realistically lose these unrelentings. They're just kind of soft here. They're just, I put them in the pile. I put them in the pile, I grabbed the pile, and then I said, all right, pile, now is your chance to shine. Realistically, we could also lose these momentums, right? So then that puts us down to 25 XP. We realistically don't need those. So what we can do, though, is we can put the ice pick back in, which takes us up to 28, and then we can put in three easy marks. Which should put us up to 30? 25. Oh, we gotta add, but we still gotta add some cards. Okay. Alright, so there's our experience. The 29 version of the deck. Oh, I suppose I should add the two more weaknesses. Can't have that one. Can't have that one. Ooh, that's a little bit spicy, actually. Ooh, that, I like that. That's going to be fun to see how that plays out. How that plays out there. Alright. We can delete these. And then we can spread. Alright, let's look at the level 0 cards. So, uh, accessory slot taken by the Eon Chart. Hands taken by the Ice Pick and the uh, Lock Picks. Leo is our ally. So, we're kind of just looking for... More ground floor. More ground ground floor stuff. Okay. <sighs> Let's look at the green cards. Grab Intel reports. Those are good. Huh. What do we finish this deck off with? Quick thinkings. Easy. And then I think we need one more card. A one of.
Maybe... Oh, I guess we don't have any neutrals. Maybe a one of, uh... Faustian. Doesn't hurt. Okay. So I think that this deck takes advantage of this character in a way that is particularly Justin. We're going to be focusing on stats. And we are going to use those stats to our advantage. This also goes in there. Okay, so now one second. Let's just look through this deck and look at the traits. Tool. Trick also is kind of nice. Relic. So not tr uh, illicit if we want to find the lockpicks. Favor. Innate. So it develops. Criminal. Okay. I, 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 no. This is going to be this is going to be pretty sick. This is going to be pretty sick. Okay. That is. Echo the Hacker. I was going to call him Hacker, but his name is actually Echo. And then we got over here, Wrecker. I'm going to wreck it. All firearm cards you control gain the melee trait and the text. It's an action. Exhaust this fight. You get plus two fists and deal plus one damage with this attack. We have firearm cards zero to five, neutral zero to five, guardian zero to four. So what we want right off the bat is we want to grab a bandolier. And we realistically want two bandoliers, just to make sure we find it, potentially. Uh, place me some stuff. We're gonna grab right off the bat. Um, a dare. We're gonna grab two darings, and we're gonna grab two take the initiatives. Sure, I'll take these. Clean them out twos, I guess. <laughs> Delete those, please. Uh, give me the vicious blows. I mean, we actually probably will grab the upgraded ones. So these cards right here, they do a really nice thing, which is they're here to help us counteract our something in our head weakness. All right, we're looking for guns. We're looking for guns. I guess these can still stay out. What guns do we want? Uh, the reality is, though, they don't need to be expensive. They could just be these Colts. And the reason is because our guns are also beat sticks. Our guns also just beat the frick out of things. I'm taking these scenes of the crime because I'm playing uh, two-player, so we want to flex a little bit. Um, is there another cheaper gun than that? <laughs> swack! 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 <laughs> My gun doesn't even need bullets. My gun doesn't even need bullets. Is that crazy? Probably, because we're just playing it as a one-use machete. <laughs> just playing it as a one-use machete. Wait a minute. Let's do it, guys. Let's... <laughs> do you see what I see? That's the funniest thing in the world. We're going to melee someone 
at a distance. That's gonna be really fun. Oh, honestly, at this note too, let's uh, grab Snipe, well, if we can find it. But it's like a boomerang gun. It comes back at us. Okay. Uh, we do probably... I don't think that should be possible, but I can't think of a way to make that not happen. I mean, honestly, it's a flavor loss, but it's a fun story win. So, unless you're worried about it being broken, I would just, like, let it live, right? I would just let it live and exist. Because it's kind of just funny. You know, it's not particularly busted. It's just kind of fun. I mean, that still works here, too. But that's too expensive for what we're going to be doing. Oh, this also seems really good here. We need to be in a going into a scenario with... But this also... It just blesses the whole... We're, we're really, uh, really cutting this thing open with a knife and seeing all the guts spill out, huh? <laughs> all the small little issues that might pop up. That's so funny. That's actually kind of funny. That's actually kind of wild. Okay, um, we're gonna grab a backpack. Which uh, I swear I can find. Uh, is there a cheap green gun? Oh my god, there is. There is. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Super cheap. The cold vest pocket. We're gonna beat the frick out of things. With this cold vest pocket. Ooh, what about the 18? Yeah, let me see. It's really about cost, right? And I suppose as well... The, that's the Survivor one, the 18. Yeah, this one's probably better than the Colt. You're right, good call. I suppose I should also see what my other weaknesses are, because we are going to go to 29. A leg injury, okay. So we definitely want to get some healing in here and a chronophobia. Okay. So just because I know, it's just better. I, I just think for these, it's kind of a bit more fun. I don't do this for campaign mode, because people have asked me about this. But I do think for when you're just testing a deck out and standalone, it's fine to just do this. I think it would too, Tasty Toast, probably. Let's show, let's look at Cold Vest Pocket. Let's look at it. Now that you bring that up. Yeah, it would. It actually would. Because you trigger the... You trigger uh, an action ability. Not the action ability, but it is a action ability. Okay, these are a maybe. Let's kind of see what we're cooking with in this kitchen so far. 
21 cards. And we're sitting at 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So we can add 9 more experience. Okay. Let's grab... I'm going to grab some overpowers because those just seem fine here. Um, we're going to potentially grab... Oh, we'll need some economy too. Hmm, we could probably could get by with some extra ammunition as well. But I mean, like, we really don't need the ammo because we're going to start, sh we're going to start whacking and then we're never going to stop whacking, right? All of our guns become kind of beat sticks. Safeguard could be good. Yeah, definitely. finish this deck off so I'm thinking like stand together is like if we can't think of anything else just putting six xp for this in is going to just be helpful for both parties right like both parties are gonna like that Probably build him just to ignore his action and just break the rogue shotgun with guardian cards and five combat. Probably, yeah. Probably. Oh, how's it going, Mike? Hmm. How many more cards do I need as well? I need nine. The awkward number of nine. All right, we're going to start with, just give me the zero cost stand together. Which we'll find. Oh my god. Oh, it's an alphabetical order. Let's start there. And also give me the zero cost, the level zero unexpected blows. Let's go there. So yeah, let's say we grab the safeguards. Safeguards are like very rarely a bad thing. Honestly, actually, we could probably even run one safeguard. I don't think we need two. Because then that puts us down to 7 XP. Uh, and then I think we just kind of... Scene of the crime, we got those, I got those. This, that puts us down to three. Seven is a slightly awkward number. We don't have an ally, do we? We don't have an ally. Okay. Give me the beat cops then, because we don't have allies. So that puts us down to three XP. Yeah, we'll take an enchant weapon. Don't think I won't. Because we can enchant it even when we're whacking with it. Alright, then we can throw these.
these in. We can throw that in. We can throw this in. So looking at this deck right now, I think the issue is the economy. So we might want to look at that one more time. Well, it's actually not that bad. It's really just the beat cops. Everything else is pretty manageable. The economy is probably fine here, TBH. How much does our gun cost? Three? It's probably fine, right? It's probably a-okay. Yeah, I think this deck looks fun, which is what's most important. Okay, I'm going to pause this, and then we are going to set up a scenario, and we are going to play it. So do not go anywhere, because on Twitch it's going to take a few moments, but on YouTube it's going to literally blink and you'll miss it. Okay, we are here doing our testing scenario. Dark Side of the Moon, because space! Silent stirring. The silence of this place is deafening. There is no wind whistling through the air, no chirping of birds, no idle sound of any kind. This is a dead world. Though you never know, you know danger lurks around every corner. You hear no sign of the beasts or the corsairs who call this place home. You must remain even quieter in order to stay hidden. Virgil Gray is held captive somewhere in the vast, strange city of the moon beasts. You, are, you must be quiet and cunning if you're to find him and escape unnoticed. Only investigators of the city of moon beasts may spend the requisite number of clues as a group to advance. Over here, we got four shroud, two clues per one clue per player, so two clues total. Test foot five. You hide among the strange trees. If you succeed, reduce your alarm level by one. Uh, during your turn, accept or another action. Evade. If you fail, raise your alarm action by one as a lightning bolt. Okay. So what are we looking for in our opening hand here? Oh, so the one we got is uh, the reverse. Once each agenda, the first time this investigator reveals an elder sign token, treat it as a minus five instead. So obviously we're looking for a weapon. Cool. <laughs> All right. and, uh, over here, I mean, obviously a Leo off the bat would be pretty nice. Because then we can get going and see how dirty this is just immediately. I think I'm going to keep the... No, no. Yeah, I'm going to keep the Lucky off the bat. That card's really good. I'm also going to keep the easy mark. Okay. Okay, over here, I mean, it doesn't really matter what we enchant, right? We're just looking for a bandolier. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> what do we do here? What do we do? Well, I mean, it's pretty easy. At the start of the investigation phase, so when our turn begins, uh, we're going to search our bonded cards for uh, a cybernetic. We're going to grab the plus one to all of our stats. Nice. Okay. Alrighty, Rue. Let us... Honestly, we're going to start by doing the investigations. So we are going to... Pay five. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to play Leo. I need another one of these, please. I am going to use Leo to do this other thing. So we may take an additional action during our turn. We are going to grab this right off the bat, I think. So, uh, Exhaust Assassin, search your bonded cards for another copy of Cybernetic Scompling and put into play. So, we're now investigating at 6 to 4. 6 to 4, because we have 1 plus this, 2 plus this, so we are 6 to 4 on this location. We'll grab a clue. Let's do it again. Ooh, we're good. We're good. 
Seems pretty good so far. That seems like a good uh, first turn. Clear off this location of its, uh, of its shroud. Uh, and then we're also going to uh, draw a card and gain a resource. Cool. Cool. Now, over here, we are going to... We're going to play two guns because that's the most important first step. And then our last thing, we're just going to gain a resource because we do have a lot of things that we want to play. So we're going to go to upkeep. And luckily, like, we're ready for an enemy. We're ready for an enemy. Okay. That's a lot less scary than it seems. Test brain X, where X is your alarm level. So we're testing at 3 to 1. Minus one, if you fail, raise your alarm level by one. So we want to be up at least one on all tests we're taking. I see you guys saw me shuffle, right? You guys saw me shuffle? All right, so the beginning of the investigation phase, we put this card aside. Uh, we would like uh, Wrecker to go first, because he's going to wreck it. Now, let's say we attack at seven minus three, minus five is three. They should get their health going. Okay. Honestly, we're just going to engage him. Oh, no, no, we're not going to engage him because... I mean, we can just shoot him with a gun, right? We can just shoot him with our guns. We don't need to necessarily just whack him with our gun. So we're going to shoot him with this normal human gun. So we have seven to three. Dude's fucking dead. And then for our last action, we're going to move into here. Okay. Yeah, we, can just, we don't need to do all the fancy shit. We can just shoot him with the gun. Okay. Uh, so, at the start of your turn, we gotta put some cards into play. So, what are we doing here? We can probably get by with just this one this turn. Five to three is probably is more than okay. So we're going to move into this location. Uh, and then we're going to investigate at five to three. Okay, cool. So we succeed. Um... This is the one that heals horror. All right. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna exhaust this instead. And we're gonna search, we're gonna name, sorry, I'm not looking, I'm not looking. We're gonna name a uh, trick. We're gonna name trick here. Seven, eight, nine, yeah, give me that easy mark, please. All right, then we're gonna investigate again at five to three. Nice. One more time at five to three. Nice. Okay, upkeep. Another gun you shouldn't have. The ice pick, uh, you maybe should have, TBH. Only investigators of the city of the moon beast may spend the requisite number of clues. I remember this place is bad. <laughs> I remember this place is bad, bad, not good. Okay. Two of five. Evil card over here is... Corsair of Lang, nearest city or surface location. Oh, you came to the wrong fucking neighborhood, buddy. Test brain five. For each point failed by, take one horror to a maximum of three horror. Okay. 
Uh, I guess we're just going three to five and hopefully not failing with that. I'll take one, two, three. Give me three horror. Okay. So, beginning the investigation phase, this goes away. We're going to grab this one, the healing version, and I'm going to heal a horror. Okay. I think what we want to do is I'm gonna easy mark. So we'll gain two resources and we'll draw a card. Uh, we'll gain, we'll play another one. We'll gain two resources and we'll draw a card. Uh, they always come in twos. <laughs> okay. Uh, next action, we're going to move in here. That's this guy. Cool. Interesting. Okay. Well, I'm going to fast out an ice pick. Uh, and then we're going to investigate at three to one. Sweet. I'll discard this to gain two clues. Uh, we'll spend them to advance. After hours weaving around leprous stone towers and searching high and low, you finally spot a group of shackled captives being led single file from the docks to who knows where. Luckily, they are guarded by only two of the foul corsairs. You create a distraction loud enough to separate the pair and then sneak by in order to free the captives. Choose an investigator of the city of Moonbeast to take control of the set-aside Virgil Gray. I think I'm going to choose Echo, who for some reason I always want to call Hacker, but I know that's not his name. <laughs> All right. Uh, he was not captured. All right, now that you're reunited, it's time to get off this rock. Randolph informs you that the light side of the moon should be safe from the reach of the moon beasts who dwell only on this side. However, it is much too far to walk by foot. You'll have to find another way. Only investigators of the Temple of the Moon Lizard may spend the requisite number of clues as a group. Well, we need two clues, so for our last action, we're just going to move into here, the Dark Crater. All right, let's whack this guy. We have seven to two. So sick. Let's give him another whack, seven to two. He's dead. Get the fuck out of here, brother. You came to the wrong uh, side of the city. Whew. Honestly? Give me the enchant weapon. We're going to put that on the Colt. Okay. Let's go upkeep. Time keeps on slipping, slipping, slipping. Oh, Eon chart's kind of huge. Okay. Evil card over here. Attached location. Test foot three. If you succeed, when investigator leaves attached location, raise that investigator's alarm level by one. All right. Well, we're not leaving that location until the other guy comes in to save it. When the act advances, each investigator takes two damage. Attached act gains test foot four to outwit. Or book. Book four or foot four. Okay, beginning the investigation phase, this F's off. Congratulations, Virgil, you're magic now. Okay. So here's what we do. We grab the plus one to all skills. Seems fun. Uh, 
Uh, and then actual, uh, and then, so actually, we're going to do his turn first. His is really easy. We're going to do Chronophobia. We're going to play Bandolier. Easy. Over here, we're going to grab the plus one to all skills. To all stats. Um, is it bad if I draw a card and get a resource here? Yeah, I'm going to wait till the end of my turn. I'm going to do everything else beforehand. Okay. Uh, we're going to use our first action to grab the plus one book. I'm going to play Eon Chart, and we're going to use it for an investigate here. So we have six to two. Sweet. Let's investigate normally, six to two. Awesome. Uh, then for our last action, we're going to test this thing out at six to two. Sweet. Six to four, sorry, six to four. We still got it, though. Uh, and then we'll spend these in advance. Oh, no. Uh, the Temple of the Moon Lizard. We won't spend them to advance. We'll just end our turn there. We have to be at the Temple of the Moon Lizard. You see, you, you understand, right? Uh, we're going to draw a card and gain a resource. Savant's kind of ginormous. Okay, we search our bonded cards for cybernetic scomp link and put it into play. So we still get this in the mythos phase. I could see that this ability could also put all other cybernetic scomps away, right? That would probably be pretty, pretty fair. All right, four of five. You do, but I've already changed this. Perfect. Okay, this is a little bit spooky. We're testing four to five. Uh, that is a minus five. <laughs> uh, so we'll take three horror. That hurts. That does hurt. That could just kill us next time. We're going to mark that as this, but don't be confused. Yeah, I think that's also fair that it goes away at the end of the investigation phase. Okay. Well, well, we're going to spend a double action to get rid of this. Uh, and then I think rather than just continue to waste time, we're going to move here and... I mean, he might be able to, actually. Let's see what you can do. Could you maybe do this test? Yeah, you're going to try this test out. We're going to try three to four. Oh, dang. If only you were lucky. Sweet. Uh, so then what we're going to do is uh, advance this. Spend those clues. While the majority of this temple is dedicated to an idol, the moon-dwelling creature referred to as the moon lizard, you also find several references to some kind of lake of primordial black ooze not far from beneath the surface. The binds to, that binds together the core of the moon. These texts imply that the whole of the moon's surface is connected by this core across multiple dimensions. Perhaps you can use it to cross over to the moon's other side, Randolph suggests. Or to the afterlife. What the frick? Just bringing the whole mood down. Yes, one or the other, Randolph replies nonchalantly. It is still our only option. 
put the set aside, things put these into play. So we put the cavern dark side. We put black core location into play. So on the set aside moon lizard, he goes here. Okay. Shuffle this into that. If each surviving investigator is the black core and has no clues on it, we advance. Space, baby. We all love it. Okay. We have two actions left. I'm really worried about this horror. Oh, this can heal. That can heal him, too. Okay, so we're just going to gain two resources. We'll go to upkeep. Ah, B Cop's also great for that. Shuffle this into that. Whoa, look at that. A single screech pierces the silence and you instinctively duck for cover. You've seen these screeches before. Horrid, eyeless monstrosities that fly along the Corsair's black galleys. Terrible things of bone and leathery, membranous skin. A flock circles and screeches overhead. Have you been spotted? It doesn't matter. You cannot stay here any longer. Raise everyone's alarm level by one. And then, uh, give me a card. Here you go. That's some horror soak. Okay, let's see what our evil cards are. We're testing four to two. Sweet. Over here. Okay. <laughs> okay, I get it. I get it. So foot's the test we're actually bad with. Which is kind of crazy as a fighter. <laughs> Sorry, no, as a, not as a fighter, as a survivor. Because that's kind of like what we do. This guy stands up. Okay, we're gonna try to break through this one. We're gonna go six to three. Six to three. Cool. This one's gone. Um, we're then gonna move out of it, raising our alarm level, but we're gonna gain a resource and give this back over here. Uh, the last thing I'm gonna do is play a beat cop. Guys, eight health. All right, give me Brain Link. Brain Link online. We're going to move in here. We're going to heal this guy of horror. We're gonna play lock picks. Um, I'll draw a card. I suppose I'll play my other lock picks. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay, this guy moves up here. We go to upkeep. Cool. One of five. Oh, frick, some cats? That does change things a bit, actually, because I was hoping to take some good damage on the moon lizard this turn. Sure. 
for each point you fail by. Okay, well, we're at five to five. Sure. Ooh, that's spicy. That's spicy, actually. We'll draw a card. Oh, no. We just became self-centered. <laughs> I should have committed something there. Okay. So what can't we do? Cool. So what does the fist one do? Okay, let's say we grab this plus one to all skills. Let's say we start there. Then let's say we gain a resource and we draw a card. Let's say we go there next. Okay, that's a nice draw. All right, we're going to engage these cats from Saturn. We're going to try to evade them at four to two. I'm going to commit this resourceful. And honestly, this Savant, I want this to go. We didn't even need it. I'm going to grab this back. After this guy's evaded, discard. Get out of here! One, two, three. This guy's going to try to evade this guy. We're at four to three. I believe. Sick. Evade the Lemoon Lizard. Okay. Um, I'll draw a card again a resource. Should have done that before. Oh, I can't even play this, it's fast. But I have these, well, uh, no, we'll just discard a card. We'll have to lose two, but that's okay. Things are looking pretty nice. Okay, now over here, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shoot my shot. Uh, so I'm going to activate the Colt is my melee. So this attack can target an enemy at a connecting location. We're going to target the Moon Lizard. Uh, it gets, we have plus one damage. So we're looking at uh, one, two, three damage. We're going to commit the Vicious Blow, and we're going to exhaust the Enchant Weapon as well. So we're looking at seven, eight, twelve, twelve to three. Sorry, twelve to five. All right. So a bunch of things happen here. One. We're going to deal one damage. We're going to deal two damage just for the start of this. So we'll go down to six from just this. We'll deal one from the Vicious Blow, putting him down to five. We're going to deal one from the Marksmanship, putting him down to four. And then we're going to deal one from this, putting him down to three. We're going to move in here for our second action. And we're going to attack this guy with the Derringer at 7 to 5. We're going to commit this to go 9 to 5. Uh, I will then use Beat Cop to kill him. Get out of here, you dumb moon lizard. No one likes you. I guess I should see what this location is. Okay, 
Let's go to upkeep. All right, we need to lose some cards here. I can lose the easy mark. That one's an easy mark to lose. <laughs> uh, I could probably lose realistically... Whew. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I realistically could probably lose one of these liquid I founds. Realistically. Okay. These cats stand up. We're at two of five. Evil card over here. Your maximum hand size is reduced by three. I'm a guardian. Do you think I care? Alright, well that's something we're going to need to do. This goes away. Dude, freaking marksman shipped with the butt of a gun on the 32 Colt. I love how this guy, like, the damage doesn't care. Uh, it's, I, I hit the exact same strength with any gun that I use. I'm like, bam, bam, bam. It feels good. It feels good. Okay. Well, I would like to have plus one to all my stats. I also think I would enjoy spending my first action grabbing the plus two book. Uh, and then... How do we do this again? Maybe we don't do the book. Honestly, actually, you know what? Let's just sit here right now. Let's just let's just play this turn out. I'm gonna spend four to grab two clues. Uh, and then we're gonna move into this location. So there's nine. Uh, these are Star Wars custom uh, investigators in Dark Side of the Moon. Chat man, I've been, I've been, I played a little bit of Elden Ring last night, but the whole thing didn't download, so I couldn't go past the tutorial door, and I've just been, I don't get to play Elden Ring until probably like midnight tonight, and I'm like, I want to play Elden Ring! God damn it, I want to play Elden Ring! Anyways, okay. A Shroud of Nine, you say? So this allows us to investigate at eight. Eight to nine is not good. We know that. Well, we have to get rid of these, so why don't we... We can use Brain. Why don't you give me this? Because I can heal a horror on me. I can't heal my damage because of my self-centered, but I don't think there's anything that stops... him from getting rid of this self-centered. He can be like, Come on, Echo, we're a team! We're a team, brother! We gotta work together! There's nothing stopping him from doing that. Um... So we're going to test Brain. We have 6 to 2. That seems pretty good. So we got 4, so we remove 2 of these. 
It's going to take us some time to claw our way through this, but that's okay. Because Fist also works. Like, that's kind of nice. All right, we're going to move in here. Honestly, yeah. Just get rid of the self-centered. As much as I want to see him dig his way through, I don't think it's the line. That card's going to be really good in this deck. We have to get rid of this, too. Sure. We're testing three to four. I can discard Beat Cop. Oh, sorry. These, were, these cats moved after us, and we lost one of these. Um, as well in the window, I'm going to play these right now, even if they have been changed. Sorry, this should have been lost as well. We should have a discarded card. It probably would have been this other Eon shirt. I'm going to play these with it as they are written right now, but I do know that they have been changed by Tasty Toast. But I'm not going to like not take advantage of my cards with the way they're printed currently. All right, we're testing. Ooh, we have six to five. So sick. Let's go. Okay. So this place has a shroud of seven. These leave. So I think we just take the brain one, because then we're at five to two. We're gonna commit a savant to go eight to two, nine to two. Give me that auto fail. All right, so we got eight to two, so we remove six of these. One, two, three, four, five, six. We could take an additional action. We're also going to heal some horror off of this guy. That additional action is going to be an investigate. We're at three to one. Uh, sorry, we're going to do it with this lock pick. We're at three to one. No, sorry, we're at uh, six to one. Holy crap. Okay, we'll ready that. Then we'll go again. <clears throat> Sweet. Okay, we are going to trigger this. We each take two damage. The lake of black urker below the surface of the moon is miles wide and bubbles with warm, noxious pockets of gas. Most of the lake bed is completely solid and it seems for a moment that Randolph's plan is dead is a dead end after all. Then you take a final step and your foot is caught by nothing. Before you can react, you're yanked under the surface. You try to shout a warning to your companions, but your words are swallowed by the black core along with the rest of your body. Your lungs barely have air. You struggle not to scream as you're carried by a fierce undertow. When you finally emerge, you're in another chamber just like the one you came from, only you can see a shaft of light piercing through the gray crust above you. Moments later, the rest of your party emerges. Did we make it? Virgil asks. Well, I thought it was the end for sure. This will make for an exciting chapter. We get to put the other locations into play. Light side of the moon and the white ship. Okay, so we did this. We got a free action. So, so let's, let's just walk through this. We did this. We got a free action. We investigated twice. I think that's where we are, right? That's where we're at. Okay, we'll move in here. And then honestly... Second verse, same as the first. Uh, we'll intel report this location. Is 
Excuse me. There we go. Okay, and then I'm going to heal a damage off myself. Now this guy's kind of just along for the ride. He's going to move in here. Uh, and then gain two resources. Actually, no, no, he's going to just get rid of this. We might as well, right? The cat moves here. This comes back to me. Let me go upkeep. Four of five. First evil card is... Sure, that doesn't matter anymore. I mean, it could, in theory, kill us. <laughs> Alright, we're testing three to four. I'm going to use this window to heal uh, damage off of you. Yeah, these, lo these leaving at the end of the investigation, investigation phase does feel a lot nicer. Anyway, um, yeah, we'll just go three to four. Minus two. I think we lucky this. Because we went down to one. This puts us back up to four. We'll draw a card. Oh yeah, Sharp Visions are in this deck. Holy cow. This deck this deck had fucking everything, man. Okay. Well, give me this. First action. Actually, no, 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 sorry. We move in here for our first action. Put the set aside, the captain's story asset into play at the white ship. The captain. I'm missing something, aren't I? I'm missing the light side of the moon. I was like, there's a location missing, isn't there? It's this one. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so we move here first. Uh, ignore the captain. He's not here yet. We move into this location. Test book or foot one. Attempt to hide. For each, uh, for every three points you succeed by, reduce your alarm level by one. I don't think we need to do that. I mean, we might as well, right? We might as well. Let's exhaust this, bring the book one in. We're going to sharp vision to investigate our location. So we have six, seven, eight, nine. Let's go ten. Oh! My hubris! My hubris! Anyways, we'll uh, test this thing out. We're at six to one. Seven, so we succeed actually by six points, so we'll reduce our alarm level by two. We don't even need these clues. I was just trying to flex on the game, yo. I mean, this guy can just move in here and gain a resource. Feature on the feature at the white ship parlay. Test brain or book X to convince the captain to set sail. X is the highest alarm level among the investigators. If you succeed, advance the act. Cool. Okay. These dumb cats are going to follow us. We're going to go to upkeep. This is going to advance. We can enforce our way in the temple. So we raise our alarm levels by one. Which does make this a little bit more tricky, admittedly. Give me a card. Which admittedly does make it a little bit more tricky. But, like, we can probably pass the brain test here. Especially with the what we got going on. Okay. Let's see what our evil cards are, shall we? Highest alarm level three or more only. Alert hunter while moving or engaging. Moonbound Biaki ignores investigator with alarm level of two or less. Thank God. 
Thank God. Cats. Okay. Well, well, Give me the plus one to all my stats. So we're four to two for this evade. Give me five to two. Honestly, give me six to two. Sick. Okay. We can take a free action, which we're going to use to Should this cat also be here? This cat should also be with me, right? Yeah, I, th I think I forgot to move him. All right, well, we're going to use that free action to take an attack of opportunity. We'll take one damage. Uh, but we are going to put the plus two brain in here. Yep. Uh, we're then going to use Eon Shard to make a free move. Uh, and then we're going to take another attack of opportunity to test this book. We have four, so we have six to four. We can go seven, eight to four. All right, it's done. Uh, we should take two damage. Bing. Resolution one. We did it. That action doesn't provoke a tap to opportunity. Oh, this one doesn't. This Oh, neither of them do. Perfect. So we were even better off than I thought we were. All right. Um, so here are my thoughts on uh, this uh, investigator, the investigators after I played through. Well, what I did was kind of nutty with that marksmanship to deal eight damage in one turn. Um... I don't know if that's necessarily that problematic of a design. It's hard to say for sure. This guy does just seem like a nice guardian where you can kind of do a fun thing if you pay a two-cost card and have a bunch of other things that work with it, right? So, like, flavor-wise, it doesn't work, but I think gameplay-wise, it still just might be okay. It still just might be fine. As long as that... Uh, I think this other guy, uh, as I always call him Hacker, but his name is Echo, I think he might be a little bit too strong. Even with these leaving the investigation phase, uh, I basically was totally okay. I had legitimately no fear. I think he just might be, I don't know what, it's just he's very strong. He's very strong. Um, I obviously, I think the Leo thing was a little bit dirty, right? It was kind of a little bit gross, but I think it might just be the fact that he's just so versatile. He can like, he's like a Lola that has the, instead of not being able to play the cards you want to play, you can choose what stats you want to be good at that turn. Uh, he's very fun to play. Like admittedly, he is very fun, but, uh, he seems pretty strong. He seems pretty strong. I also think this should provoke a tax of opportunity. <sighs> All 
I'm moving Rogue from his pool. That's fair. I mean, like, the only really gross Rogue thing was Leo, right? Because otherwise, like, I think the 0 to 1 makes it really fine. I think what, honestly, what makes him so strong is the fact that he's very versatile. The thing is, though, if you put him down to 2 2 2 2, right? Then that makes it so that with this, he becomes a 3 3. With this, he becomes a 4. I don't know. It's, I think it's a very tough character to balance. I think it's a very tough character to figure out exactly um, where his numbers need to be and what he can do. Yeah. It's tough. It's tough. I, I enjoyed him. I enjoyed him a lot. I just felt like he was uh, a little bit too juicy. Just a little bit too juicy. I think this guy is also kind of fun, um, but he's a little bit one note, but I mean, he's a guardian, right? Guardians are, by their very nature, one note. That's who they are as a class. So there is that. But no, I had a really fun time playing them and I'm excited to try the other ones. Uh, I'm going to end the video here, so thank you so much for watching on YouTube. If you enjoyed custom content and you want to see more custom content, let me know in the comments below. Especially these one-shots like this, they work really well. Like custom player card content is a lot different than custom campaign content, which takes like eight weeks of videos. This I can just do one, and then we can move on to a new one, and everyone's happy. If you also have your own custom content that you want to see me play, consider going into our Discord channel down below in the, in the description, and then you can uh, figure out... Uh, you can post it in the in our Arkham channel, and then uh, I'll play it. Because I'm also going to be playing some other stuff by another uh, user on the channel, as well as finishing more, more of these Bad Batch investigators over time. So thank you so much for watching. Have a good one. And as always, GG's.